It is a scam when you don't allow everyone to operate on fair terms. We are the Robin Hoods of sports betting. We take something back from the rich bookies and enable our customers to beat them instead. We are back. We've actually been put on air for another week. George Gamble, the card betting guru, is with us along with Jonas Yelstad, pro sports better. Uh, but as he likes to be referred to as, most importantly, the Trade Mate Sports co-founder. Um, we've got them back for another week for an uh, EPL betting preview. Games this week kicking off on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And then we've got the FA Cup on the weekend. Uh, George, mate, are you there? I certainly am. Thank you very much for having me back. Obviously enjoyed being on, uh, on last week. It was good fun. So yeah, looking forward to coming back and tackling the week's fixtures ahead. Mate, you were my best on ground last week, so it's great to have you back. Uh, Jonas, mate, better performance this week. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Let's, uh, it's, it's important not to set the bar too high. I mean, you guys have, both have experience with being on the podcast, so take some time to step up to meet your <laughs> levels. Yeah, I guess you're more used to those YouTube videos, mate. Yeah, I mean, we all know how many takes those take, so... Oh, there he goes. Look at that, early shot. I uh, I hope you've got a Gucci headband to give away, mate. Well, let's see if we have an entries. Well, mate, we've, uh, we've got a lot of entries, I have to say, and we'll be giving away that Gucci headband at the end of the podcast. And uh, one notable entry, uh, alan.maxim at hotmail.com. That was very interesting. Oh. He wants a backup, so uh, might be uh, sending one off to Newcastle, but we'll see who gets that at the end of the podcast. It's, uh, yeah, it's very interesting stuff. And uh, I saw that he was still wearing a Gucci headband on the weekend. Yeah, he were, but he had to cover up the Gucci logo. logo. <laughs> you, can never have too you, many, you can never have too many Gucci headbands, apparently. <laughs> Can I, can I ask the, the answer that everyone wants to know the answer to? The question that everyone wants to know the answer to is probably better. How on earth is that thing worth 180 pounds? That's, it's Gucci, man. It's outrageous. Can you imagine the margin on that? Uh, pretty good. Uh, probably. But that didn't, uh, there was uh, the CEO of, uh, I don't know what the the company is called. Even the French company, the guy was to, married to Salma Hayek. He just went out and said, "When you said they sell luxury goods, you can also take luxury margins." So, hmm. goes hand in hand. Sounds like the soft bookies, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, fellas, we'll kick on. Football quiz question of the week. We had our winner last week was George, so pick up your game this week, Jonas. Mate, fun stat from the uh, from the weekend, or at least from Wednesday to Sunday, there were 23 goals scored in the EPL. How many of them were scored in the second half? And I'll give you another multiple choice. Was it 14, 16, 18, or 20 goals? So uh, mm. stew over those ones. Very, very interesting. That was one of the things that I picked up over the weekend uh, myself. Well, did you guys have any big takeaways yourself? Uh, well, from the Premier League, well, I mean, I was, obviously, as you know, we'll, we'll go over it shortly, but uh, a couple of my picks. I mean, I kind of, I didn't go big on anything in the Premier League because it was kind of the first sort of proper time back. You wanted to kind of see how things would pan out. Um, so obviously, so my focus was more towards other leagues that have been back a bit longer. But... But yeah, I mean, the only thing that annoyed me was uh, particularly the Villa Sheffield United game. The stats look so strong on that; I, I couldn't not have a go. Um, but it just kind of shows how unpredictable it is. In the you know Villa, the most fouled side in the league, um, I think I had them to get 14 free kicks in the game. Or no, 15 free kicks in the game. They finished half time with 11. So brilliant. Only need four more. That's that done. Then I got three the second half. Like it's, it was just ridiculous. Like in terms of how unpredictable it was. And obviously we had the whole matter with uh, you know goal line tech and all of that. But yeah, from the first kind of rounds of uh, the Premier League in, in this kind of, since it's obviously come back, I'd say it's even more unpredictable. Personally, having a look at it, some of the things that have been happening, um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing if things you know settle in. You know, the more games that once we're kind of back into it with more games under our belts, um, kind of seeing if things sort of get back to back to normal. 
Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's, it's even more unpredictable, in my opinion, from a, from a card's perspective. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I noticed was the quiz question. Like I said, the amount of goals that happened in the last, you know, 20, 30 minutes of the game. I guess if you'd, um, if you'd put all your money on most more goals mm. in the second half, you'd be a, a rich man coming into this weekend. Jonas, did you uh, see anything? Uh, anything what I saw is basically the awake teams were heavily favoured and uh, are more favoured than per usual, as we discussed. Um, home advantage not being that big and you could also see that uh, kind of odds movement when the game started kicking off so uh, so yeah we'll get more into that later I guess when you look into the picks but I saw also like the trend of the away teams dropping in odds once the game started going in play yeah um, all right, well, that unpredictableness was highlighted in some of our uh, results from just from your best uh, best bets of the weekend, fellas. I hate to say it, both uh, both of you didn't uh, didn't perform the greatest. Um, ah, yeah. Uh, ah, hey, I mean, I said Newcastle first, the first week. Back. Newcastle's gonna win to clean, no, but win to zero. So I should have said that instead. Win to nil. <laughs> But I didn't expect them to score three goals because I didn't expect... Uh, well, first of all, if you saw St. <coughs> Maxim's goal, that was a joke. Like, uh, even us could do a better job than that defender. Yeah. With our feet tied up, even. So, uh, I mean... Yeah. yeah, fair point. I still think I think Newcastle did well to score when they got Joe Linton up front. <laughs> to be honest, his his first effort on goal, my, I've seen better in Sunday League when they've been asleep for two hours after being out on the town. Like, that was horrendous but obviously got on the score sheet but my word 40 million we should have a striker off between him and Dominic Solanke because he is absolutely horrible also. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. he's uh, and he I think it was like 25 million from Liverpool maybe yeah something like that yeah I think that was about right oh that's some that's some money spent for absolutely nothing that's just about as much as we spent yeah. on David Luiz to get a uh, Two red, two <laughs> yellow cards, or actually no, a yellow card and a red card. Yeah. Uh, so. Yep. Um, anyway, fellas, we don't want to talk about Arsenal. Uh, other than that, in terms of our picks, Marius did get his pick right under four and a half. He didn't go too big on that one, like one point four in odds, but he got that one on Leipzig and Dusseldorf. And I tell you what, fellas, I'm giving myself man of the match <laughs> in terms of uh, in terms of picks on the weekend. So I, I said bet on the West Tigers at two point two five on Betway. They shortened into 1.6 or 1.5 come kickoff. I mean, talk about finding some value. And uh, and I said maybe get on minus nine and a half, and they won by 16, I think. So, oh, I tell you what. Well, well done, that man. Well done, Who that, is man. that man. It's incredible stuff. But uh, yeah, just shows. I think the... I was. Well, go sorry, go on. That was just say it shows the power of the punter. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. It certainly mate. does. No, I was going to say, in terms of uh, some stats obviously from that the Leicester game, because I think I went with Leicester to score two, uh, for, you know, five or more Leicester corners and, and Watford two cards. I mean, what was quite interesting is you know Watford committed fifteen fouls that game, more than uh, obviously more than Leicester, um, but they, Watford didn't receive a single card, which was uh, which is quite mad. I think uh, Craig Porson was the referee for that one. He was quite lenient because there was a few that he let get away. You know, for example, Troy Deeney committed three fouls himself. Um, you know, there's some of those fouls that you know were probably card worthy, but you know Leicester obviously got seven corners as well. And the one that uh, stood out for me was the fact that Leicester had 15 shots, but they only got two on target, which is kind of is that rustiness or is that you know the, the strikers not being quite with it in terms of or just something not working within the team? I mean, it's, you can't say anything because it's the first game back, but I thought that was quite interesting you know, to have that many shots and only seem to get two on target. And obviously, you know, Ben Chilwell's goal was absolutely phenomenal. So that was obviously one of the shots on target. You're not, you're not stopping that. No, <laughs> I was no say, mate, that one stopping was that. Certainly on target. <laughs> the thing is, because I had a training myself, um, obviously at the weekend, so I, I watched up to about 60, 70 minutes, and I had to go. Obviously, no action in that time slot whatsoever, and I missed all the good parts. But, uh, but yeah, hell of a goal, hell of a goal. Mm. Yeah, no, it was very, very good. Um, all right, well, we might as well kick off there, fellas. Uh, Leicester are playing Brighton tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday night, and also Spurs versus West Ham. I had a quick look at the odds before. I think there's, I don't know, I, I think there's a bit of value in uh, in Leicester at 1.7 personally, just because, just from watching Brighton on the weekend and their, re, their form before that, uh, before COVID-19 happened, um, 
Bro- Brighton were bloody ordinary against Arsenal, and I'm telling you, because Arsenal are just about the worst performance I've ever seen from them, and uh, and they still really struggle to break Arsenal down. So, um, what do you uh, what do you reckon? Um, well, for me, kind of looking at some of the stats going into it, both cards and, and goals, that sort of thing. Um, when Brighton have gone away to teams in the top five this season, they've conceded two goals in four out of four. So they concede on the road to those top teams. Um, you know, Leicester have scored in eight out of eight games at home to teams in the bottom half as well. And I think that game against Watford, you know, it was an away game. I think it settled them in nicely. I think I think they'll get the job done here against Brighton. Um, obviously, had a great win against Arsenal, but might have taken a lot out of them, both physically and mentally. Um, so for a bet here for you know Leicester to score two goals and win the game, um, is odds on, on bet three six five at least is eleven to ten, so just over evens. Um, and considering how many times that's happened um, in both obviously their respective games, I think I think there's value there to, to be had. To be honest, mm. Jonas. Yeah, so even though Brighton turned it around and won against Arsenal, I saw the odds were dropping on Arsenal when it went in play. I had a little bet on Arsenal, draw no bet at 1.7, and I saw they were as low as 1.5 on the Asian bookies during in play. So for those reasons, I didn't watch the game, but I assume Brighton performed quite poorly due to those odds changes. Leicester, on the other hand, yeah, they seem to be playing well, but just based on the odds movements throughout the game. And for those reasons, I'm going to go with Leicester, just straight up minus one point five at one seventy two. Yeah, yeah, I I, uh, I think the pr- the price for Leicester is quite juicy, and like I said, Brighton, they they're not a, I, from what I saw, they they should have beaten Arsenal by many many goals. So um, anyway, that's that just shows how good Arsenal are. Anything for Spurs versus West Ham, fellas? I'll, uh, well, looking at it again, uh, I've actually got a few interesting facts for this one as well. Um, but yeah, it's always an interesting fixture, Spurs West Ham. It's always quite a fiery affair. Um, when Spurs are played against uh, teams at home uh, who are in the bottom half, they've seen two plus cards in five out of eight, whilst the opposition's also seen two plus in uh, six out of eight of those games. But they've also scored and conceded in seven out of those games as well. So judging from the Spurs side, you'd potentially expect some goals. Um, but West Ham have conceded in seven out of eight games away to teams in the top half. So. Obviously, the edge you would think would be with Spurs. They're the better side, obviously higher up in the table. Um, but interestingly, in terms of these facts, there's a few facts to this one. So the away side, in this fixture um, between Spurs and West Ham, the away side has won on six out of the last seven occasions, which is obviously some feat. Um, but Spurs are obviously looking to complete uh, a double over West Ham for the first time since 2012-2013 season. And that was when Andre Vies boas is in charge. So, so West Ham have got a, g- a fairly good record in this fixture. Um, but I guess a, a sort of short question, a mini quiz question for you. Uh, West Ham won away last season uh, against Spurs, but they've not won back-to-back away against Spurs since 1966. Do you know who the manager was then? Oh, Any chance? I wasn't even alive. <laughs> my old man was about two years old, so what chance am I? Oh, blimey. <laughs> yeah, mine was, mine was a little older than that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, to be fair, I didn't think any of you would get it, but it's, uh, it's Ron Greenwood. But it shows how long it's been since West Ham have, have done the double, have won away, uh, you know, twice, obviously, at, at Spurs. I mean, so it's, it's going to be an interesting fixture. I think, I personally think it's going to be quite a tight affair. Watching Spurs against Man United, they looked okay in stages, but overall United kind of dominated it, I'd say. Um, West Ham have been quite poor. But it's, it's difficult to tell who's going to win with this one. But if I had to, I think I would go for Spurs to break the mould a bit and I think they'd get the win here yeah anything anything else for that one Jonas well I go on the other side I'm gonna, I'm on a West Ham plus one at 1.7 so if they lose with one goal get my money back I don't think yeah, Tottenham is very likely to win with two goals or more looking judging from the way they played Manchester United very passive just going for counters and uh, Kane I don't know what's wrong with him but he didn't seem fit at all I was impressed by that. Uh, is it Dutch? Uh, uh, yeah, Bergwijn, is it? Yeah, he seemed really good. Mm. And Son seemed fresh, but you know, I, I just wasn't really impressed with Spurs at all. And I think uh, West Ham can easily get a draw or not. Yeah, a draw. I think they're, they're more likely to get away with a draw or a win than uh, losing with two goals. So 
I go for the plus one. Yeah, so Tottenham is sitting at 1.7 and the draw is at 4.06 and West Ham to win 5.03. So, um, yeah, some decent odds there. What about Wednesday, fellas? We've got a decent game day there. We've got Norwich versus Everton, Wolves versus Bournemouth, Newcastle, Aston Villa, Manchester United, Sheffield United, and Liverpool versus Palace. Some of the big things that I noticed was the massive odds here for Sheffield United and Palace. So Sheffield United to beat Manchester United at 9.47. I believe that's with Pinnacle. And Palace to beat Liverpool at 15 uh, in odds, which, I mean, I'm not saying that either of these two teams are going to win, but I thought that was, they were massive, massive prices. Jonas, what are you seeing on this day, mate? Anything exciting? Um, exciting, exciting. I think uh, Manchester United p- played pretty good against um, um, Tottenham. I think they're going to have a far easier job with against Sheffield United. They got a bit of match fit now. They played a bit together. I think they're going in with uh, uh, what can I say? Positive atmosphere going uh, into this game. I think they're going to really try to show what they what they're made of and secure that uh, Champions League spot. So my pick for that game has been. Uh, Manchester United minus one, which is was priced at one seventy six when I bet it. Okay, George. Um, the one, the one, the kind of the games that I've sort of chosen to have a look at. I mean, personally, in terms of cards, I'll um I'll be leaving alone uh, Liverpool, uh, Palace, and United, Sheffield United. I just think. Particularly in Liverpool games, there's never many cards in Liverpool games, usually because Liverpool have dominated possession. The way they pass it, players don't get near them for, for those kind of fouls. So there's not often a lot of cards there. It varies, so I'm leaving that one well alone. Um, I think in terms of result, Liverpool will get the job done there. Um, it's similar with Man United and Sheffield United. You know, Sheffield United, they're so consistent with getting cards away from home. But obviously, it didn't happen against Villa, but it happened against obviously Newcastle. And I actually thought Sheffield United looked pretty much in control of that game up until the red card. Uh, you know, Newcastle had their moments, but Sheffield United controlled it uh, really well. Um, but after the red card, it just kind of went to pieces. Um, so the games I've sort of chosen to have a look at, uh, in particular, is the Newcastle against Aston Villa uh, game, because simply because it's a, you know it is a big game. Villa are fighting for their lives at the moment. Newcastle coming off the back of that win are going to want to progress and push up the table. So I think there's a lot of motivation here for both sides. Um, in the last, uh, so in you know all of the Newcastle's games at home to teams in the in the bottom half, they've seen two two or more cards on six out of seven occasions. Um, and you know in that time, the opposition have seen two plus in four out of seven. Meanwhile, Villa away to other teams in the bottom half. You know they've seen two plus in four out of five. Um, obviously, they get a lot of free kicks thanks to Jack Grealish. So but it's worth noting as well, this uh, Chris Kavanagh, I believe, is in charge of this game in terms of refing it. And in both the games that um, Kavanagh has refed Aston Villa this season, um, their opponent has seen two cards. So and the way Villa play with Jack Grealish as well, the desperation, I think they're going to go for it. So for the, I do think Newcastle will pick up a couple of cards in this game. Um, but, you know, Villa have conceded in every single game away to sides in, in the bottom half. So I'd say... I wouldn't go for a result in this one, but I'd have Newcastle to score alongside picking up a couple of cards as well. Well, you like that one, Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but... Uh, Max in to get on well, the score sheet again? Well, I don't really know. I like My gut is telling me that you know Newcastle overperformed, Villa lost for those reasons. The market also go, might go in uh, Newcastle's favour and over, under, uh, undervalue Newcastle, but... I don't really know. I don't have a strong feeling either way, so I'm just going to leave this game. All right. And then any other picks, George, for that uh, for that match day on Wednesday? Um, yeah, I looked at uh, Wolves against Bournemouth um, as well. Um, they're sort of looking at you know Bournemouth picking up a couple of cards. I quite fancy because you know Wolves great side. They've been playing absolutely brilliant this season. They look like they're sort of picking up where they left off. And you know, for example, I think it was the Neto goal, just phenomenal. You know, they tired them out and obviously got the win in the end. Um, and as well as that, the opposition, when they've played teams in the bottom half, um, you know, the opposition's seen two or more cards on seven out of eight occasions. Bournemouth have seen two plus in six out of seven away games, the teams in the top half. Um, and they've also conceded two or more goals in two out of three games away to the top six. So for this one, if I was to pick, I'd say Bournemouth to pick up a couple of cards uh, and Wolves to score two or more goals. Yeah, you mentioned the Wolves, uh, the Wolves run of form at the moment. That... That race for fifth spot, if Manchester City end up getting a ban, mate, that uh, that race for fifth spot, Wolves, we're not, Sheffield we're, United. We're not getting a ban. It's not happening. It's not happening. 
<laughs> well, they've already they've already been to court, haven't they? Yeah, we get the result in July. So it's mm. it's a fu- it's a funny one because both sides say no, that they're, they're done for, they're done for. They're both saying the same thing that they're both fine. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, it, you're right though. If obviously that does come into play, then uh, obviously big opportunity for Wolves. Mm, yeah, Manchester United. Oh, who else is there going for it? Wolves, Sheffield United. It's a it's one hell of a race for fifth spot. But um, we'll see what happens there. I uh, now that Arsenal have basically got no chance, I am hoping that Manchester City. Uh, just you know they don't get suspended at all so i can laugh at manchester yeah. united when they don't get it place. <laughs> that'd be we'll good be fun. fun yeah to, to top it up to end that day norwich against everton everton performed sort of well they didn't like concede against uh, liverpool liverpool being a strong defensive team obviously i think they're gonna have a much easier job against norwich uh the odds on norwich just increased before uh they let in a goal and for those reasons i think everton is gonna dominate that game also and I bet Everton minus a half at 196. Yeah, I'm seeing, um, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll refresh my page, but I'm seeing Everton at 1.97. I'm not sure what, I'm just on odds portal here, so I'm not sure what exact bookmaker that is, but you would say 1.97 um, f- just to win. That's pretty decent uh, value there, right, Jonas? Well, yeah, I think so. I think with I think with that one though, obviously Everton, it was a hard game for them. They had to you know had to work for that draw, um, and you know if they're going to be playing on you know a few days rest as opposed to Norwich who haven't had to play, potentially that's what reflected in the odds. I'm not sure. I mean overall you'd say Everton have got far much more quality than Norwich, but maybe the rest will be a factor. Who knows? Mm, yeah, we'll see. I mean it's a weird time at the moment. Also squad rotations too. I feel like. You know, the third game back for some teams or two, two games back now, midweek, we might be seeing some resting uh, for these midweek matches. Um, all right, Thursday, fellas, Southampton versus the mighty Arsenal, Burnley versus Watford, and the feature match, Chelsea versus Man City. Um, I've just noted here, Manchester City, uh, I don't know if this is gone or not, this price, but 192 at Marathon Bet I thought was quite a decent price for City. Um, although I've just remembered that they do have the game tonight on Monday, so it's a three-day turnaround, so that might be why. Um, George, mate, I'll start with you. Anything for uh, Thursday? Yeah, so I do what I can to avoid uh, betting on Man City because obviously they're my team and uh, I just I don't like doing it because just try and avoid that emotion over kind of common sense, as it were. But even if I was, I don't think, from a car's perspective, uh, this game would kind of entice me in at all. Um, I think naturally I'm going to say Man City are going to win, but I generally think because of the way they play, um, you know, we fared quite well against Chelsea uh, in recent years. I think they beat us in the in the reverse fixture. Um, but again, it's a tough one. You've got to look at the motivation for both sides. Obviously, Chelsea wanted to you know cement obviously where they are. Um, the league's gone for City. So again, because of all these variables, it's, it's one that I just I would leave alone. Um, the ones that's kind of interested me are the other two. So you've obviously got Southampton, Arsenal, Burnley, Watford. Um, I actually think if you're going to hate me for saying it, but I think I'm more likely to favour Southampton. Before you say it, mate. Before you say it, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I think just the way that um, you know Southampton obviously uh, dispatched was it. I'm trying to remember who they're playing now. Um, this weekend, Norwich. That's I think three 0 they beat. Yeah, Norwich. yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, Norwich started brilliantly, like absolutely pressed Southampton back. They couldn't get out, but in the end, Southampton dominated and dispatched them well. And I just think Arsenal are going to struggle because, as well as that, Arsenal haven't won away in 2020. What's no. just they've not won away in the league. Um, I know they're not top six, but another interesting bit about Arsenal is you know they've not beaten a top six side away for five years, which is just yeah. in, for a top. Last a club time was Manchester City, mate. Yeah, it was long, <laughs> to, long time ago now. <laughs> yeah, very, very, um, very. But uh, but yeah, so obviously Southampton playing teams in the top half at home have picked up two cards in five out of six. They've also scored uh, in five out of six as well. And when Arsenal have got, you know, Arsenal have conceded in five out of eight games away to sides in the bottom half. Um, and in those games, Arsenal's opposition has seen two cards in six out of eight appearances. So, and I, I think with this one, you know, Arsenal they're going to they need to do whatever they can to get wins. I don't think they're going to win here, but I think they'll give all they can and cause Southampton some problems. Um, so just looking at the stats, um, if I was to have a bet on it, I'd personally think, depending on who the ref is as well, uh, Southampton to maybe pick up a couple of cards, but I also think Southampton will score. So that would probably be, I'd have a look at the odds and who the ref is on that, but I think so far as a base to sort of work from, that would be my pick for that one. Um, 
I also had a look at Burnley Watford. Um, for me, it was kind of one of those things because they're very, in terms of cards, both sides are very inconsistent with cards. But you know, Watford, they're pretty much top of the discipline table. Um, but you know, they do see a lot of cards at home. Away, they've seen two plus in five out of seven games away to teams in the bottom half. But then with Burnley, the kind of the way they sort of play football, the opposition has only seen cards in three out of seven games when they've been playing at home to teams in the bottom half. So there's, there's a lot of um, stats that kind of don't necessarily work. So I wouldn't necessarily want to have a go. The only thing that's sort of concrete, I'd say, is potentially for Burnley to score. And I think Burnley would have the edge over Watford in terms of result. But, uh, but again, so I think my only bet on that match day would potentially be on the Southampton Arsenal game. Yeah, no, I, I with Arsenal, mate, from what I saw on the weekend, from what I saw against Manchester City, I haven't seen them look that directionless in attack in a long, long time. Mm. Their midfield is just, it's it's sad to think how much of an effect the injury of Shaka had on us because yeah. although he's not the greatest player, he actually offers just a lot of stability in the midfield. So having Genduzi and Ceballos there at the moment, they're just two very inconsistent players and just they're not gonna they don't create that much going forward so um yeah i would i wouldn't put my money on anything to do with arsenal scoring any kind of goals because the i I said to myself while we're playing brighton i was like the only way we're going to score a goal is if something freakish happens from or bamiang or pepe and that's exactly what happened so Mm. um i wouldn't be I wouldn't go anywhere near Arsenal at the moment because the injuries yeah. that they've had and the people that have been injured heavily influence the way they score goals. Yeah. Um, Jonas, mate, Thursday, you got anything for us? Yeah, I have two bets on Thursday. Uh, one being Southampton draw no bet at 194 and the other one being Watford draw no bet at 188. Yeah, okay. I'll agree but- with those Arsenal bets any day, fellas. What else you got, Jonas? No, I'm just saying it's going to be... It's hard to say, though, about uh, Burnley. I haven't seen them play. Um, obviously, they will have uh, a shorter rest rather than Watford. Could have some uh, difficulties. But, uh, yeah. And uh, I thought uh, Southampton played well against Norwich. Arsenal, not been impressed at all. Uh, got a couple of injuries... Yeah, and this is the third game, so I think that should be one more than Southampton, if I'm correct. Sorry, what was that? So, uh, Southampton, this is going to be the second game Southampton have played, right? Correct, yes. And they've yeah. had a decent so, turnaround too, Friday to Thursday that would be, yeah. Yeah, so um, so yeah, I, for those reasons I'll go with Southampton, draw no bet, and Watford, draw no bet. Yep, I'm very happy I won't be watching that Southampton Arsenal game. I will be out <laughs> drinking and, get this, I'll be out doing some karaoke, fellas. So uh, you'll probably hear me all the way from Oslo. How about that? Oh, blimey. it. What's the go-to song? Robbie Williams, mate. Easy. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Rock DJ or, Ooh, or, classic. or Better Man. Better Man's a good one, too. You're good. No sex stop? Ooh. If my girlfriend's lucky, mate. If my girlfriend's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just to, oh, good, good. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's fast forward. Uh, we've got the FA Cup on the weekend. We've got four games there Norwich Man United, Sheffield United versus Arsenal, Leicester City Chelsea, and the mighty Newcastle against the Manchester Citizens. Fellas, that's a, that's a nerve wracking battle for you, George. What do you think, mate? Yeah, but in that one, obviously, uh, our games away at Newcastle, more often than not, have had quite a lot attached to them in terms of you know, what they mean, uh, obviously, to get the win, obviously, in the years gone by. Yaya Torre braced to help us on our way to our title, which was uh, obviously very good. But I personally, in terms of cards, I don't touch FA Cup weekends just because you don't know what the lineups are going to be. You don't know what's going to happen. and So I, I prefer to avoid it and sort of watch with some interest. But uh, I like to have a dabble on kind of the results or double chances and and handicaps as well every now and then. I'm, I'm sorry to say, I'm going to say it again, but I think Sheffield are potentially going to pile the misery on even further, um, at least getting a draw out of that one, because you know Arsenal's motivation is they need to do better in the league, simple as that. That's going to be their main thing. They've, they've fared very well in the FA Cup over the past, obviously, mm. how many years? Done very well. That's kind of been their sort of saving grace, particularly for Wenger, winning it on a number of occasions. Um I'd, I'd say the edge is probably with Sheffield here, though, if uh, you know Arteta decides to obviously rotate it. The, the thing is, mate, is that if they can 
win the FA Cup, which I know is highly unlikely. They get into the Europa League. So that's basically their last chance of European football. So And Sheffield United are chasing that fifth spot. So they could potentially Very also rotate their squad, whereas Arsenal... I don't know. If I was them, I don't know. You've still got to put some effort into the Premier League, but maybe. But the problem is, we don't have many players. Lots of injuries, no, so we're probably going to play it. the exact same squad. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Sheffield United get the cookies there. Um, Jonas, mate, what do you think? No, I agree with what you're saying. Like, Arsenal now starting to thin out their squad. Uh, kind of got to pick their battle. So if they're going to focus on FA Cup or... Uh, Premier League. I see reasons for focusing on the FA Cup, but also finishing in the bottom half would be a total disaster for Arsenal. So um, hard to predict. And also with uh, with all these games, there's got to be matches to be played prior to this. So there could be even more injuries. And looking at the statistics from Germany and Premier League this far, I think there's been a big increase in injuries. Uh, so very very hard to predict how this is going to go. And what are they going to be able to line up with? Uh, I mean, City being over two goals favorites against Newcastle, I feel that's hard. That's like, that's high. For somebody who was also, yeah, well, it's, it is City and it is Newcastle and it's two very unpredictable teams. I can see it go either way, but uh, I kind of like uh, betting the underdogs in these kind of games. So... My bet will then be biased and Newcastle plus two at 205. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's no real limits up yet. Uh, like, I'm watching at the pinnacle lines now. You can bet, like, 200 euros. So, who knows? Yeah. No, we might... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stray away too much from the FA Cup just because, you know, it is... There's so much to happen before. Then not only is it, you know, by the time this comes out, four or five days away, it's uh, there's so many games to be played beforehand. So... Um, we'll probably find more value, fellas, in the or at least more picks um, in the other leagues. So obviously, Bundesliga, Serie A, La Liga, Championship, all back on now. George, mate, anything else or oh, anything from these leagues at all? Yeah, well, I've been doing obviously quite fairly well on the Bundesliga since the restart, but um, I've got uh, a couple of fancies uh, for the midweek games actually, uh, particularly in Serie A. Um, so the first one coming from uh, Genoa uh, versus Parma at home. You know, I mean, Parma, they're in the top half, but I don't think they deserve necessarily to be there in terms of, you know, what the stats say. You know, they, their first game back, they went away to bottom half Torino and uh, drew one all. But Torino had 20-odd shots, including eight on target, and Parma just looked completely out of sorts. Uh, but what interested me is um, the referees, well, I have to forgive my pronunciation, but... Piero Giacomelli, um, yeah, there you go, there you go, I'm fluent, but <laughs> but no, so he's awarded six penalties in the 11 games that he's refereed this season, um, including games that Genoa featured in as well, and I think given the fact that you know Palmer can see more shots than any other team um, when playing away, and Genoa always foul players uh, in dangerous areas, um, I think a penalty to be awarded I mean, is great value because you know six out of eleven that implies around a fifty-five percent of the time. Um, but Bet three six five are currently offering a penalty to be awarded at two to one, which is around you know thirty-three point three percent implied probability. So I definitely think there's value there. Um, but as well as that, in terms of kind of going through, the, I won't go through all of the, the stats again. But from what I found in looking at those stats, the uh, assessment I've made is you know a Genoa first half card. Um, both teams receive two cards and potentially Palmer to score is a good shout as well um, and again f- from uh, Serie A is Spal against Cagliari as well so kind of going through that you know Rosario Abiso is in charge of this one he's the referee and he's got a, a foul, an average of 5.3 cards per game so he's he's very quick to hand those cards out um, you know both teams have, have seen a number you know Pretty much, I think six out of seven, seven out of seven times in terms of playing teams away and playing teams at home in the bottom half, they've seen um, two plus cards or more. So the bets I've gone with for for this one is you know both teams over one card and, and Calorie to score at five to six, um, but also both teams over one card, two plus match goals because I think they're going to be going at it. Um, and a Calorie first half card is eleven to eight, which was very surprising um, as well. So those are my two from from Serie A. You've got when Getafe are playing in La Liga, you've always got to have a look at the stats because Getafe are just they could start they could start a fight on their own on their own training pitch. You know they're just it's obscene. 
um, how many fouls they give away. You know, they're by far the side that commits the most fouls on average per game. Um, it's, in, it's absolutely ridiculous. In fact, looking at, uh, just looking at the numbers here. So when playing away from home, they commit on average 19, or almost 20 fouls per game, 19.9 uh, on average, which is the most in the league, which is just insane. Absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, so for, and just for the, as a quick summary on the Valladolid Getafe game, which is tomorrow, um, one that I'm very surprised. It was four, it's four to one. Um, Getafe a first half card, and Getafe win and over four match cards is four to one, which I thought was incredible, considering you know Getafe have obviously uh, doing quite well away from home in terms of the form, um, and obviously Valladolid struggling at home as well. You know, I thought that was great odds, and then there's a few others um, as well. So both teams over two, over one card, over four match cards, and Katafi just to score is eleven to eight, and I, th- I think that's pretty much nailed on. I do like the look of that. So those are my bets for uh, midweek in in Europe. Obviously, with cards, markets aren't always released, so I've not had a chance necessarily to look at um, all the ones for the weekend, next weekend, as it were. But uh, it'll be probably a similar angle. Good man, you're full of stats as always. Aren't you? What, can what can I say? What can I say? All right, Jonas, can you beat that, mate? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's nearly as good as your uh, quiz question you asked us last week, mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate I, uh, I watched that over a couple of times. That was actually quite funny. Very, it was very good. All right, fellas. Well, um, if you've got nothing, Jonas, then we might as well just go to our best bets of the weekend in the EPL. Jonas, mate, kick us off. Best EPL bet of game week 32. Two, I believe. Okay, so what I like the most would be Everton to win against Norwich, and uh, yeah, I gotta go for it. Southampton draw no better against Arsenal. All right, no, I'm not gonna blame you there, mate. George, what have you got? Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go with. Um, I personally think I'm gonna go with Newcastle uh, to get two or more cards at home to Villa, and then I might combine that with a double chance of Southampton to beat Arsenal. All right, beautiful fellas. Um, and then to wrap things up on our side, Marius, CBS Pick of the Week, went through last week, and this week he's going with Wolves to beat... Oh, who are they playing again? Um, they are playing Bournemouth at home. Bournemouth, yes. So he's gone Wolves to beat Bournemouth minus zero point seven five at one eighty six. I believe that's um I believe that's with Pinnacle. So um yeah, there's Marius' CBS pick of the week and he'll be on uh, CBS hopefully on Friday. Or live on Sports HQ, the big time man. And uh, for myself, I know everyone's crying out for some value picks from me, fellas. So and you know what? <laughs> By popular demand I've increased my picks threefold this week. So Ooh. I'm going uh, back to the NRL again. So I'm going to go the Rabbitohs minus five and a half at 3.1 to beat the Panthers. Tigers again at minus nine and a half at 2.12 to beat uh, the Bulldogs. And UFC pick, uh, I like the I like the odds here on Mickey Gull to beat uh, Mike Perry. And a quick side note, if you haven't seen, Mike Perry posted, he's a nutter. He posted a picture or a video of himself, sorry, with a massive gash over his eye. Uh, and that was a couple of days ago, so probably like 10, 12 days before the fight. So it's very strange that he's happy to show everyone that. So if he gets hit there, I'm sure that'll open up right above his eye. Not an ideal spot. So there's a couple of picks from me. Um, fellas, it's been fun once again. Uh, George, you want to mention where you are before we uh, get to the... We've got a listener question two coming up and the quiz answer and, wait for it, the Gucci giveaway. But um, before we get to that, do you want to mention where they can find you, George? Yeah, sure. So you can find me on Twitter and that's at C. George Gamble um, as well as that I do obviously uh, put a lot of articles together uh, for the guys that we love betting as well for, for a very good site so uh, yeah that's where you can find me and Jonas mate anything you want to promote this week Gucci 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 <laughs> <laughs> I must say mate there's a uh, there's a video coming out Trade Mate Sports Story Part 2 I'm going to do a plug for you I think my personal belief it is your greatest piece of work mate uh so if you want to if you want to preview maybe log into the trade mate account and have a look before it gets released on thursday afternoon but i think it's i think it's your greatest ever piece of work it's the one where you challenge unibet 
Ah, Magnus Carlsen. Bring him on. Mm. Beat him in everything but chess and sports. <laughs> love it, love it. So you guys have to tune in for that. That's, in my opinion, the greatest video I think we've ever put out. But, um, fellas, we've got a listener question. His name is Rabona, number two. Uh, he wants to ask, what is the most trustworthy online betting website, in your opinion? George, mate, do you want to kick us off? In terms of kind of, you know, bookies or when, you know, or stat sites? I'm... Well, I'd say bookies, mate. Yeah, I can say I'll go with that. Um, it's a very difficult one. I mean, I've had kind of instant, inst- instances with a, with a number of them. Um, but uh, I'd say for me, I like the way that, you know, with Bet365... Um, I like the way, for example, where if they've settled something wrong, which means you've won and you've withdrawn the cash, um, they'll say, sorry, it was our, our mistake, we've reset. They'll always reset it to your balance back to zero rather than a minus as a gesture of goodwill uh, for getting things wrong. I mean, I know other people out there will say, oh, no, but I've had this problem with them, I've had this problem with them. Of course, everyone has different problems with different bookies. Um, but I've had a number of issues with other companies. So for me personally, um, I quite like Bet365 and I think they're quite transparent. Um, or as transparent as a bookie can be, really. Um, but yeah, so for me, I'd probably say about three six five. Yeah, also I also talked to a fellow called Matt from Inplay Man uh, on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, and he said that Bet three six five are implementing something where they contact uh, every customer that signs up. They must have a bit of coin nowadays, uh, and asking them like why they're betting and you know if they've got a job and all these kind of things. So I don't know how much of that's true, but. Um, yeah, no, it's very uh, interesting stuff. Jonas, mate, you might have a bit of insight on the sharp bookie side. Uh, well, I mean, I I think both 365 and Pinnacle is the number one. It's kind of hard to say because they're going against different demographics in a way and different users. But uh, there's always going to be, like, if you, if you ask the punters, how many of them have actually read through the Bet365 C's and C's? I'd say probably around 0.001%. And uh, there are a lot of things to be said there that can be, all, like everyone who is complaining, it has always breached the T's and C's in some kind of way, either by, you know, maybe they won too much over a 24 hour period, which Bet365 is covered by, uh, or if they can't prove where the money is coming from, if they received a transfer from a friend, you know, if they've done something and they got caught, they kind of go out and whine and don't com- like, explain the full story. So I feel like 365 and Pinnacle would be the ones worth mentioning. Who was the bookmaker where you placed, I think it was like 10 or 7 $10,000 bets or something like that, and they kept voiding them, and then... Or no, they they were in the um or whatever you call it, and then I eventually accepted them all. Which one was that? Oh, uh, SBO. SBO. So maybe not too that trustworthy. Was, well, that was placed through Sport Market, and it happened sometimes in the past, and sometimes it got on, and sometimes it didn't. And then you have Sing Bet was known for avoiding bets, and they never let you know before the game has started. So if an odds drop too much, then they're gonna just say, oh, it was an abnormal bet or. Uh, there was a fault on our side with the prices. Hmm. And um, that's like, even even if you bet them at 188 when Pinnacle is at 186 or 187. So there's been some shady stuff there also. That was a uh, ugly day to be in the Yelstad uh, household. <clears throat> Um, all right fellas we have made it all the way to the quiz answer for this week uh so do we want to have a guest this week we can start with jonas because he did go second last week so uh 23 goals in the premier league from wednesday to sunday how many of them were scored in the second half 14 16 18 20 Mm. I'm just going to guess that you are not very balanced in what you're doing. So for that, those reasons, I'm going to pick the third highest number like you did last week and then go for 18. All right. And George? Yeah, see, that's what I was going to go for as well. But in term- <laughs> we've, got, we've got to be different. We can't go for the same one. Um, that's why I didn't pick 10 last week. Yeah. <laughs> exactly that. Exactly. Uh, so I don't... <laughs> I've got to change my orders. Sorry, fellas. I'm that's really not right. good. I'm not a good quiz master. <laughs> <laughs> you better be better at karaoke than you are at Quizmaster. Oh, you don't um, have to worry about that, mate. <laughs> so, uh, uh, 20 is too high in terms of if there's 23. There was definitely more than that. 
I'll, I'll go with 16, but I think it was 18. Yeah, 16 yeah. to my answer. I mean, it was 18. I'm sorry, fellas. I'll do better next <laughs> week. <laughs> Two weeks in and I've been read like a book. <laughs> oh, it's shocking. But, um, all right. Sorry about that, fellas. What we're going to do now is we're going to do the Gucci headband giveaway, the moment everyone has been waiting for. And what I'm yep. going to try and do here is I've got my random name picker here. I've basically put everyone's emails in. And I'm going to try and uh, show this on my screen. I'm hoping this works. I think that has worked. So as you can see here, guys, I'm about to pick uh, out of... We've got 50 names here. Unfortunately, we couldn't get all of you in there because SurveyMonkey doesn't allow you to see more than 50 responses unless you pay for it. So sorry about that. It was the first 50 that got in. But here we go. Are we ready? It is starting. Sorry if your email's coming up. And it's giving away all your information. But the winner is a.badjwa7 at gmail.com. So uh, sorry for giving your email away, mate, but that's the price you pay <laughs> when, you are, when, when you want a Gucci headband. So we'll just uh, I'll get rid of that headband. I mean, sorry, the uh, email. And we'll go back to our beautiful faces right now. But um, anything you want to say, Jonas, to uh, bat, we'll call him Badjwa. Badjwa. Well, welcome to the Gucci gang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what an honor it is. <laughs> oh. um, so, unfortunately, Maxim, you've missed out on this one. And your uh, 50 or so entries, George, you missed out too. Unbelievable. Um, Unbelievable. I guess, I guess Maxim will be lining up at Sport Direct tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more than more, more than likely. Fella. Yeah. All right, fellas. Anything else to say before we head off? Uh, no, just from obviously a personal point. Just thanks again for having me on. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Always a always a good time. Good laugh as well. And uh, yeah, hope to see you see you again soon. Yep. Are you going to say thank you, Jonas? Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you for coming on, George. Thank you, Alex, for being no worries at all. Just being yourself. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah. It means a lot. All right. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, make sure you do a quick rate and review of the podcast if you want us to be around next week. Um, and subscribe to the podcast. That's also very important. Um, and as always, if you're looking to implement some of the uh, value betting strategies that we have talked about today, you can go and try a free week of TradeMate Sports. Um, the man sitting on the right hand side of your screen he's the he's the brains behind that operation so if you basically want a simulated version of Jonas's brain then um, then head over to TradeMate Sports and start a free trial but fellas once again great week great week great preview and hopefully we'll be back next week eh? hopefully so looking forward to a good week of sport yeah yes and an Arsenal victory alright see you fellas <laughs> <laughs>